Hello everybody, it's Wildman Z here for another edition of my uh, little library tour for 2022. This is the uh, first one I ever did, first book, first library book tour. I made a few videos about a year ago, not too many people were watching, so I kind of got disheartened and uh, discontinued, I deleted them. So maybe I'll start reviewing books again when I'm done with my little tour. Um, this is a really cool book. This is Revelation Space by Alistair Reynolds. I would assume that by the planet on the cover you would guess that it's sci-fi. And it is, and it's hard sci-fi, and it's really good. He's a physicist, he's British, um, an astrophysicist, and he really infuses a lot of his knowledge about black holes and quasars and all these type of things into his writing without belaboring it. This is set in a really cool uh, future where, for example, people are integrated in with a lot of cybernetics and AI components as part of them, and uh, some people more so than others. What happened is this thing called the melding plague, and so... Um, it's sort of a, a viral um, entity that affects the, the, the mechanical components of people. And so a lot of people remain hermetically sealed in boxes, like they, they don't want to get the plague. Uh, there's people that are actually like woven into the walls and so forth with tendrils coming out of their bodies, but they're still alive. It's kind of weird uh, and cool. And so it's, it's a, this is a story with a lot of intrigue. It has cool alien races in it. One is like a planktonic type of thing. And it's really good. It's the first part of a series, and I do want to read more in it. Um, it was an it was an author I heard about probably on Media Death Cult. That guy on there, his name's Moyd Mortison. He's a pretty cool guy. He's British. It gives him a little cool factor. He wears a lot of loud shirts and uh, uses a lot of profanity. He's, he's a kind of an all right guy. But he always talks about Alistair Reynolds. So if Moyd uh, ever watches this, thanks for uh, talking about that book. I really enjoyed it. Here's a book written by my neighbor, <laughs> American Comic Chronicles, by Keith Dallas. This is the 1980s. He um, he wrote this the 80s, the 60s, 70s, and 90s were written by somebody else, but he was the editor on all of them. Uh, when I when I told him this is a really cool encyclopedia, he says it's a chronicle. He's like he said that he really wanted to emphasize you know, different things of interest. So it's not a complete encyclopedia, but he talks about some of the big books, in this case, in the 80s. Um, he also talks about the market and sales and, you know, what was going on in the bullpens and things like that. It's Marvel, DC, and all the other companies. Had a lot of things in it. I, you know, I never read Ninja Turtles. He talks all about them, you know. Really, you know, really cool photos. Loving Rockets, you know, a lot of, a lot of cool images from the comics. Made me want to read. He, he talks about Love and Rockets in here, which was something I... Here's what I was reading, X-Factor. Um, something I really wanted to read, but for some reason, I, I, th I think it's a non-superhero comic that I, I abnegated from uh, my reading. Here's, here's the original X-Men right here. They weren't in the 80s, but he's got them in here for some reason or another. Um, back in the day, if you're uh, newer to comics, the Beast was not blue fur. He actually was a, like an acromegaliac. He had like really big feet and really big hands. It was kind of dexterous. He had like the strength of a gorilla back in the day. But it's a good book series. Uh, if you're interested in comics, I suggest uh, picking it up. I always say we live in Central City here because he's really into the Flash. And he wrote a, a companion guide for the Flash, which is in one of my comics. So I won't review it, at least with the books. But um, he, um, he, he also in our neighborhood... Back in the day, before I moved in, it moved into the area again. I was here when I was a child. Uh, Carmine Infantino uh, lived down the street as well. I think he had a summer house out here. It's it was sort of like a it used to be a summer resort area where I'm at right now. Now everybody just lives here all year. This is what I'm reading right now, so I'll consider part of my library. It basically sits by me right these these days. I'm on about book eight of this. Uh, it's the Aeneid by Virgil, uh, which is sort of the Roman version of uh, the the works of Homer, just taken over by Virgil about Aeneas trying to settle a new land, the land of in the land of the Latins, which becomes uh, Rome, Roman Empire. And it's really good. It's written in verse by uh, Alan Mandelbaum. And this was, I forgot where I read he was the person to read in terms of if you wanted to read it in verse. I don't have a copy of the Iliad and the Odyssey laying around. I read them in college and I uh, returned a book to the library. I didn't steal them. I really need to get a copy of that because it's I use Ovid as a reference for some of the characters in here, and he, has, and he does have a nice glossary, but I, I get more information out of uh, Ovid. There's a lot of A names in here. He's got Aeneas, Echisus, his son is like something like Scantius. The names are confusing, so I'm always turning to the glossary because uh, I get confused with that. It's really nice, though. It's uh, really enjoying it. If you like the Iliad and the Odyssey, I think you'll definitely love Virgil's The Aeneid. Here's a really groovy book. 
This is Becoming Wild by Carl Safina. I didn't realize this. Carl Safina, he's a prominent biology writer for popular books, and he's a researcher as well, but he does research right down the road from me at Stony Brook University, about five miles away from me. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what subdivision of biology he's in, but he definitely knows a lot about field and wildlife biology. Um, this book deals with the question if if higher animals like chordates, uh, backboned animals like birds and mammals and so forth, if they have culture and uh, personality, and he argues like I would, except he argues it from a, a rigorous platform, that they do. They do exude behaviors that we would consider to be something like personality traits uh, and things they hand off to members of their families and extended families, their their packs or clans, what have you. He talks about three model systems in here, and they're, they're all very elegant and done with experts. One is uh, sperm whales, and he's in the Caribbean to study them. Another is uh, macaws in Central America. And then the third are chimpanzees in the uh, the Congo. And there's a few pictures in here. It's not it's not uh, too richly uh, photographed, but there's, there's some color plates in here. We got some uh, lovable chimps here. And uh, I, my favorite section here was with the whales, sperm whales. I'm, my favorite book is Moby Dick, arguably. And uh, so anytime I read about sperm whales, um, or any whales really, it's, it's something I uh, really enjoyed in Flukes of the Whale. And all sorts of interesting anecdotes about sperm whale behavior. Of course, they're very intelligent. Um, here's a book that it's it's a it's a it's a graphic novel, I guess, but it's hardcover. It was my um, bookshelf, so I'm going to consider it a book. This is uh, Star Trek: The Complete John Byrne by IDW, and I'm a big John Byrne fan. He's an old school artist. I don't think his art is quite the same as it used to be. Maybe it's just a style issue, but it's still really groovy. And uh, looks like some Klingons here. I'm not a Star Trekky, Trekker, if whatever you call you got yourselves, um, but I enjoy Star Trek, and uh, I, I'm more of in Star Wars and Dune, of course. But the um, I love John Byrne, and he's important in my childhood. When I was uh, got into comic comics when I was about 11 or 12, so it was the late 70s, and he was on the um, he was in the middle of his run with uh, Uncanny X Men. First Uncanny X Men, I'll dig it out of the box and show everybody. It was uh, 131. I still have the my the copy I had when I was a kid, and uh, it's got Emma Frost on the cover, and it's got all the X Men there captured in cages, except for Nightcrawler. He's crawling up a wall. When I remember seeing the three fingers, and it was just blew me away. I was like, "Who is this guy?" You know, this is way, 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 way before the internet, so like you didn't know who people were just by googling them. You actually had to discover them. You had to read the book, and he was on it. The art was gorgeous, and the writing was great too by Chris Claremont. But his run with Chris Claremont, if you're a younger guy and you like comics but you never read it. Go out and get yourself um, a, a complete addiction. Get, get yourself an addiction by getting a complete uh, work like one of the omnibuses on it, um, with the Uncanny X Men omnibus, or, or you know the, one of the epics on it. It would be really good. But you'll re you're really in for a treat. It's some of the strongest writing, some of the best artwork um, that I've ever seen in a comic. I think my that's arguably my favorite. Um, it's it's really close with uh, Roy Thomas and. Uh, John Bushima's Avengers. That was a little bit before my time, but once I, I discovered them uh, in um, different collections later on, uh, you know, 20 years ago, so I was like, wow, this is really good. That was more of like the uh, late 60s, early 70s. So that was, I was, you know, very, very young or, or not born. So uh, a couple collections I have here. This is the uh, first three books of The uh, Expanse. We got Leviathan Wakes. Adabon's Gate and Caliban's War. I think I showed another one, Sabola Byrne, which I have not read. I've read all these guys, though. They got really groovy covers. They're all pictures of spaceships from various perspectives, sort of abstract. You know, they catch you at a weird angle. Um, the series is really good. The book series and the TV series, and they go together nicely. I'll just hold one of these books up so they don't put my ugly mug as the uh, little picture. Uh, the um, it's hard sci-fi, both the books and the series. They take things like gravity and human biology and acceleration, uh, you know, all that into deep deep account in, in in plotting. So it's not like Star Wars and Star Trek, and where you know they can just jump to light speed or j jump through a wormhole and nothing happens to them. This really takes all that into account. When the ship stops accelerating, including when it's moving at constant velocity, you float. You know. So you have to put on some magnetic boots, but your hand will kind of float up. And they really build that into the act, acting. You'll see characters sitting there, and they kind of have to pretend like the hand's floating in the air, even if they're 
magnetically fixed to the floor. And so it's, it takes all that into account. It really makes it gritty and believable. And it really, like he always says in here, it's the, the image he tries to hammer in your head is your high speed hauling through space in a tin can with the abysmal vacuum of space around you it's near absolute zero it's got you know this it's devoid of all gas and air it's it's you know it's really a horrifying you're almost when you're in a spaceship it's almost like you're in a coffin if you think about it and he really gets that idea with the writing of course when i say he it's actually a misnomer because uh james s.a Corey are two people two men write this and one of them works with uh G.R.R. Martin, so you get that kind of narrative where it's multi-person. They'll take maybe somebody on the main ship or two people on there, give you their perspective, and then maybe somebody on Earth. Uh, usually it is a woman who's in charge of uh, like the United Nations. They give you her perspective, and usually somebody on Mars. They give you some different perspectives and mix this, you know, bring things together, kind of like they do in the Game of Thrones book and series. So it's it's written like that. The TV show is a little less like that, but the book that's it's very much if you like game of thrones and you want it in space this kind of is like that so i recommend it it's really good if you like hard sci-fi if you don't like hard sci-fi then it's probably not for you this is something that i got i think this is a bargain i got this big old set here for 35 bucks, this is the main works of Fyodor Dostoevsky, and I always say his name wrong. I was in grad school one time with a Russian girl, a Russian young woman, and I said his name, and she, she corrected me like four times, and I just couldn't say it like she was saying it. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm American. That's uh, hard to say. Uh, Crime and Punishment, I've read that. The, the, not in this collection, but I've read it in a separate book, a library book. Uh, the Devils, so this is by Word, Wordsworth Editions. Devils. Never read it. House of the Dead. Never read it. The Idiot. Never read it. The Brothers Karamazov. Um, I've read that. And that's really good. They actually call here the Karamazov Brothers. When I read it, it was called the Brothers Karamazov. I guess that's just a nuance of how they want to uh, translate it. And it says uh, Notes from the Other Ground. I've heard that, but I've never read it. Um, I think this is a hell of a deal for 35 bucks. You know there's a lot of good literature here. <laughs> and like I said, I've only read two of these books. And I'm going to reread... Um, I'm going to reread them last. I'm going to read the ones I haven't read first. And I don't know. If anybody knows a good one to start with, I The Devil sounds really good, but so does House of the Dead. I just, <laughs> going by the titles, you know what you're getting into with Fyodor Dostoevsky. The other guy I really want to read is uh, Stosinyskin. I've, I've, my uncle, I remember when I was a kid, I was in New Jersey for a while with uh, an uncle of mine who was very bookish. I kind of thought he was a dullard uh, when I was younger because he would always read. He didn't talk much. But he was always reading the uh, Gulag Archipelago. And I never, I was like, ah, who wants to read that? I asked him what it's about. It's about being, uh, it's about the terror, the horror of communism and being interned in a, in a camp in Siberia. And I was kind of, you know, I was a little kid. I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. And uh, not in retrospect, I'm like, probably it's, it's. I know it's an excellent book, but I have to read that. Um, I've never read uh, St. Petersburg. I've never read any, uh, pretty much I've read War and Peace and uh, a few other pieces by Tolstoy. And that's about it for the Russians. And, you know, the two aforementioned books that I just uh, cited. I need to read more of the Russians because uh, everything I've read by them, I really like. And so if anybody knows other other good authors in, uh, you know, from Russia to Soviet Union, please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, all in, I'm all in on it. So on that note, that's about all I have for tonight. That's my uh, some more of my library, including the book I'm reading right now. I don't know what I'm going to read next. I want to reread Pride and Prejudice this year because uh, when I was younger, I had real, real distaste for reading anything by females, including that book. I, I didn't get it. I didn't like it. I was like, it was just too feminine for me. So I'm thinking about reading that. I also have The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I'm thinking of reading that next as well. So if anybody has any recommendations, I'm also going to read Middlemarch. So it's going to be very... Uh, a female author, female protagonist oriented year, uh, 2022. I want to expand my, uh, writing and I don't want to be like, uh, Steve Donahue always accuses guys of being dude bros. I don't want to be a dude bro anymore. I, I need to grow out of this. I'm in my fifties. So on that note, I, uh, digressed and went off on a little tangent there, but hopefully people don't mind. I'll hopefully bring you another video tomorrow or the next day. Um, I got a few more minutes on my phone here, so it was made a nicer video. Wild man Z out. Everybody have a good day.